All stands ready, Lord Commander. Ah, the moment has come then. Pray excuse my lateness. I paid a brief visit to the workshop to inquire about the mana cutters. The engineers assure me that they're ready. The area is now but a short flight away. Yet what a long and winding path we took to reach this point. Were it not for Master Alphino's proposal, we never would have attempted to parley with the dragons. Though our negotiations yielded little, our expedition with Lady Isa taught us much. You took an unimaginable risk. I could scarce believe the tale Estinian told. Aye, tis true that many of our countrymen would sooner die than join hands with the heretic's mistress. But twas through that most unlikely of alliances that we came to speak with Reisvelger. A conversation that went rather poorly, as I recall. In this instance, the journey was more important than the destination. Had we not slain Nidhogg's consort, Tiamun, and put the Great Worm on his guard, the Dravanians would have arrived at Ishgard's walls long ago. Aye, that they would. Full grateful am I for every hour of respite your actions have afforded us. Thanks to you, our defenses are much improved. Tis but a pity they won't be enough. Thus, you believe an assault upon the area represents the city's best chance of survival. Is that not so, Astinium? I am under no illusions. Nidhogg's might is legendary. But with his eye in my possession, I can stifle his strength at the source. Victory will be hard won, even so. And I shall be glad indeed to have the Warrior of Light at my side. You shall have my blade as well. There are more of these mana cutters to be had, yes? Lord Commander, no! How can I, a proud knight of Ishgard, stand by and do naught while an outsider risks life and limb for our homeland? I swore an oath to protect this city. Pray leave the slaying of dragons to dragoons, Sir Knight. Your duty to command the city's defense is no less vital. Should we fail and Nidhogg slip through our grasp, who then will hold the walls against him? Will you leave Ishgard in the hands of the Holy See Zealots? There are others. Who but you has the authority and the standing to orchestrate a city-wide defense? I do not, and neither does the Warrior of Light. That is why it is our place to fight, and yours to remain here, Lord Commander. What? You too, Master Alfino. By the fury! You have shown some promise, but this adversary is far beyond your skills.
Your candor is appreciated, Sir Dragoon. I shall remain then and cheer you from afar. Well, my friend, it would seem I have discouraged the last of the volunteers and claimed the task as ours alone. But if any alive can best this worm, tis surely we too. Welcome everyone, this is Simon Protagonist and this is my first run of the Airy dungeon, which is the second story dungeon in the 3.0 Heaven's Ward main story. I normally don't do commentary um, for the story, but I figured I act, this was actually a really bad run. I mean, really bad. I, I have done it since, and it is incredibly easy. But, considering it was my first time in here, I think this was everyone's first time in here, to be honest. It, it threw me off. Uh, there was a lot of mechanics I didn't expect or even really notice. So I made a lot of mistakes in this dungeon, but anyway, the first few trash mobs are literally just that. Trash mobs. Uh, you get to the first sort of intersection here, where off to the left you see over there in the back there is a treasure chest. And a path on the right which is currently blocked off. There's another intersection coming up. I, we, I didn't even see the treasure chest my first time through. But there's another intersection coming up where on the right hand side there is a treasure chest and on the left is on the way up to more 
mobs. Throughout this first section, uh, there is lightning bolts, as you can see. It randomly targets a person and does a small AoE. Just avoid it. It's not a big deal. The treasure chests in this dungeon can both drop random trash loot, as well as gear. I don't recall what the item level is that this one drops, so I'm not going to make a quote. You'll see it at the end of the first boss uh, as to what item level drops from here. Anyway, that's all the trash for the first section. And now the first boss, there's only really one real mechanic and that is staying near him at certain times as well as, well, that's one of the mechanics. He does a move, I uh, can't remember what it's called, but there it is, that I can't re really read that on my monitor, but basically to avoid it, to stay close, I figured that out <laughs> pretty damn quickly. And then this move is actually one that will target one person and put a tether on them. You see that purple line there linking up to the dragoon? Yeah. After a while, that person will take heavy damage. And you can avoid this by running over to one of the pillars, actually. The, if you run over to one of the pillars, the purple tether actually tethers to the pillar instead. So that you can avoid damage there. I miss this mechanic completely and it kind of kills me really, really easily. The person who isn't tethered gets a, um, starts getting, well, okay, let me rephrase that. The people that are not tethered by that ability get a small AoE around them, just simply sidestep out of the way to avoid it, it's not a big deal. And at the same time an ad will spawn that will target the tethered player, as you can see I'm tethered once again. Yes, that guy there, he will target the tethered player and attack them essentially. But again, because I didn't really know what the tether was, I was trying to figure out what it was. I even asked the other party members, but they had no idea. And now I'm having a hard time getting rid of my paralysis. So I died. I figured it would be a wipe, but my party apparently did pretty, it was apparently close. So they actually killed the boss just then. So there's that, yeah, they killed the boss before I even had a chance. And there's me running into a wall typing to the, to my teammates. Let's quickly grab this. Item level, is that 136? I can't really read that properly. Again, my monitor, I can't read the text very well. I think it drops item level 136. It's not bad equipment, but it's not better than augmented ironworks. So there's no real point in upgrading your augmented ironworks quite just yet. And here we have the second lot of trash. Not that much different, just more Durgans and that's about it. You can avoid that one big dragon there just by running by him really because he's asleep and he won't be woken up unless you get too close. <clears throat> 
or by um you see those smaller dragons there when they are killed they do like a little pulse damage thing which can wake up the big dragon There is actually quite a lot of loot that drops in these in these new dungeons. So it's quite easy to gear yourself up for the new content. Same as with that dragon, you can actually avoid it just by taking the smaller dragons away from it and sidestepping this guy. Again, you don't really see many people doing that because most people in this dungeon, well, everyone in this dungeon, regardless, is leveling. So, pretty much when leveling, you're going to kill every enemy along your way so you won't really be worrying about avoiding enemies because you're going to want to kill everything for the experience Alright, and that wraps up for the second lot of trash mobs. Now we're up to the second boss. This guy... Hmm... Not really that difficult, to be honest. There are a couple mechanics to this, but... Nothing you really need to worry about. It's just avoid stuff like don't get do not get that poison please if that hits you you get a poison debuff which cannot be assumed by the way and that poison debuff one or two stacks not a big deal four or five stacks and i'm pretty much letting you die because you will be taking so much damage, my cures will basically be ineffectual. So there is no point me even keeping you alive at that point. I had done that plenty where someone had four or five stacks of that poison and I just let them die and just raise them. Because it would cost me less MP to raise someone than it would be to just heal them, heal through them. Because the more stacks you have, the more the longer that poison is going to last it already has like a minute on it every time you get hit by one of those stacks i'm pretty certain that minute resets and it could be quite devastating on on the healers because in all honesty in the latest expansion with all the updates to the jobs and everything the new healer ability, the new white mage abilities, I should say, because there are three different healers. The new white mage abilities are really good. However, they have nerfed the white mage quite a lot. For example, um, protect is no longer specific to white mage. Even a tank can use it, and it would still be just as good. Stone skin is now 10%, not 18%. And Holy isn't as powerful, so DPS is kind of pointless now. And 
the cost of spells has got to skyrockets after you hit uh, after, oh, after level 50 basically the cost of your spells just skyrockets so it can be really hard to keep your MP up and I have a lot of troubles at some parts of the game with my MP maybe not so much how I am geared out currently like long after the main story but I do still have a lot of troubles with my MP anyway that's that guy uh, I didn't actually comment on the ads that spawn just kill them quickly because they will they will absorb the uh, the balls of gas and if they do they get bigger and I'm f I don't actually know what happens <laughs> if they absorb too many maybe they explode maybe they just do uh, room wide damage I'm not sure I've never seen it anyway moving on to the third wave third and final wave of the ads and that is just dragons <laughs> again just more more of the same that we've already seen so Enjoy. Actually, I think that guy was new. Um, nothing to really worry about. I think he has a frontal conal AoE. But aside from that, I don't think they have anything really to them. They're just your standard punching mob. Yeah, it's just me enjoying the environmental change because that's new. Well, not often did that used to happen, so that's just me being a bit thrown off about it. Couple of Avis-like enemies, uh, nothing to really write home about, just beaten down. That's about it. I don't even know if they do anything major. They don't even do the scream that the Avis does. <clears throat> Here you just have some ads. Uh, some dragons we've already seen. Just beat them down. Uh, watch out because they do spawn on the sides as well. So the tank needs to be careful of that. And here a bunch of enemies spawn and go right for me because I am the healer, so that's natural. Um, they are really, really low on health. So, well, they don't have a lot of health, I should say. But anyway, on to the final boss. Now this guy is actually quite simple, um, the boss itself, huge spoiler by the way, it's, it's who you all think it is, it's Nidhogg, but anyway, um, quite simple, all you actually have to do is protect um, this guy, I can never remember his name, 
I can't even read it on the screen. So just protect him. He has the dragoon. Just protect the dragoon. And as a healer, it's pretty simple. Just stone skin him. Put a regen on him maybe when he starts taking damage. And that's about it. He does have a lot of health though. So he can take quite a beating. Anyway, for Nedhog himself... As you saw there, he has like he puts down a fireball on a person, and if someone stands in it, they take burn damage, obviously. And after a while, that fireball will do a frontal AOE. Just avoid it. Pretty, pretty simple. And he also has that scream, which is just a a room wide AOE. You take little damage. Nothing, to, nothing to worry about. This, however, kind of is. Um, this is an, an indefinite thing. It will it will remain until it is destroyed. Well, kind of. You it gives you a countdown, and after that countdown, the person in, if it hasn't been destroyed, the person inside will just outright die. So if you're not stuck inside it, destroy it. Simple as. Alright, now for this phase, which is basically phase 2, again it's just protecting the Dragoon. Um, a, a, uh, an amount of adds will spawn and just target him. Um, they will basically ignore you completely <laughs> and just target the Dragoon. Just as a healer, keep the Dragoon alive simply by curing him, casting stone skin on him, whatever. Kind of easy. Oh, there's even been a couple of times I've ignored him completely and just DPS down the ads. And when I've noticed he's getting really low, I just use Benediction on him. Because he has a lot of health. I mean, a lot of health. And Benediction just cures it completely. Now, there is a trigger, basically. Now we have a countdown, a certain amount of time to destroy all the ads, because over on the, on the other side of the arena, I didn't actually show it because I didn't know it was there, Nidhogg is preparing an attack, and if you don't destroy all the ads, that attack will wipe you. And that has been my guide on the airy. Hope you guys enjoyed and I'll see you guys next time on Tales of a White Mage. Bye bye now.